And it's that time of the week again. A little bit later than we usually go on, but here we are. The Mel and Jen show coming to you from Johannesburg and on Teeb. It's all about SA people and sapeople.com. Morning, Jenny. Good morning, Melanie. How are you? I'm absolutely fabulous, thank you. Just had a lovely long walk in the very cool Johannesburg weather. The clouds came over for some reason after being kind of like feeling it like spring was here. We felt like we're back in winter again, but that's okay. It's all good. It all happens like that. And after a week down at the coast and in the hinterland of uh, the Hilton and uh, the Clarence and all over and just missing out on the mad traffic that was happening between Durban and Peter Maritzburg on Saturday and Sunday. I'm quite glad to be home, I must say. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Did you get home in time to watch the comrades, though? Unfortunately, no. Um, uh, but we did start watching it um, before we left Hilton in the morning. The main be reason being is because the people we were staying with, we got one of the guys that works for them, Sabello, um, was actually doing the race as well. So they were up at like 4.30 in the morning to take him to the starting point and we tracked him the whole way down and he finished in under nine hours. So he got the Bill Rowan medal, which was really great for his first comrades run. I oh, that's that. amazing. I actually was watching when, when the cutoff time was. Oh, and that's the saddest. Oh, oh. oh my goodness, it was heartbreaking. But the most beautiful thing was this one, the, the first man to just miss it by like a, a millisecond, you know. Mm. Um, when they interviewed him, he was just amazing. He just said, no, I'm, I'm, I can't wait for next year. I think they're mad, frankly. <laughs> but then I'm a walker, so why would I be doing anything to do with running? <laughs> and Mel, did you see, I mean, South Africa was really swept up. I think because we haven't had the comrades for three years. It's been, or two years, whatever. So it's just, it's just been three years since it was Peter Maritz spoke to Durban. Yeah. Um, and obviously the biggest, most beautiful thing to come out of it was the guy who held up the sign saying, Prudence, will you marry me? I ran oh. all this way for you. <laughs> <laughs> and, so and thank God. Thank goodness she said yes, because <laughs> that could have been embarrassing. Um, that, that would have been heart wrenching, yeah. It would have been yeah. Awful. But I mean, how I was so glad that you know South African kind of like did us proud, and I mean, but the, the controversy then about uh, what's her name, who, who the female that um, won, the Russian lady. Yeah, um, because I mean that whole thing that's going on that she's not allowed to accept prize money, and I mean the last minute attempts to get her to actually be allowed to run even. Was I like know she crazy. had to go to court. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think it's crazy oh, that everybody's being affected by people and things that are outside of their control. I, I yeah. Find that quite sad. But anyway, yeah. Comrades is all about running together and being together and people coming together and just absolutely doing a wonderful thing. As I said, they're mad. But, <laughs> <laughs> but the human spirit at its ultimate, just, just really amazing. In fact, you know, apart from the winner, who I'm so happy to see his company has actually given him a 100, because, you know, he said even though he won, he's not going to re resign. Yeah. Um, they've given him a 100,000 Rand bonus and a month off. <laughs> To go and recuperate. I'm sure he needs right now. <laughs> yeah. But but also, you know, there were so many people, and we haven't even had time to publish this yet, but there were so many people who either had prosthetic legs or were running barefoot or with socks on or, or um, just in wheelchairs. I think there was a lady who came all the way from England. There were two th to, to, run, to do it in a wheelchair, mm -hmm. and she got in on time. Um, there were over 2,000 people who, even though it's still, you know, COVID-y times, um, 2,000 foreign runners made their way to South Africa for this ultimate race. So, fantastic. Well, I had three people who come to my Pilates classes who were running, and I hope they managed to do it in time. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to find out because two of them are leaving this week to go and actually live in England now. So um, I hope they really? all managed the cutoff and did it in time. Yeah. I mean, did I you see? I don't know if you saw, but we had an article a couple of weeks ago from somebody who was heartbroken leaving South Africa and just, you know, why why she's leaving and why she's heartbroken about leaving. And then now this week, and we have got um, the article on SA People thanks to Susan Hayden, but um, Susan from the Disco Pants blog. So, so she had started feeling a little disconcerted with 
South African, you know, she's so passionately South African, mm. but the load shedding and everything kind of got to her. And just talking about your two friends going to England, she's kind of saying, well, maybe think twice. She's just been over to Sweden for a month and where she's got some relatives and everything. And she said, you know, overseas is not that much better at the moment. You know, we're all struggling and, um, yeah, I think she described some of the homes in Europe as being like sort of Barbie doll places. You know, they they really are small. And I've said it to you before, people have this this thing about Europeans and Europe. And meanwhile, most people here, you know, struggle a lot more than than, than okay, let's not say most. Let me not say that. But you know what I mean. In, in it's it's tougher. Boxes, yes, yeah. Yeah, it's 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 a tougher life. However it is a, I find it a beautiful life. But for Susan it's not. And I think a lot of people uh, have resonated with that now that er uh, maybe maybe stay a little longer. Yeah, if you can do away with the fact that you know, we don't exactly have the best leaders and that we have potholes and that we have load yeah. shedding and that there's water issues and infrastructure hasn't been kept up with. We still live in a beautiful country with beautiful people. Exactly. And, and no more and... was that apparent with my little trip around the country again when yeah. we blew the tire on the way to... You said with the taxi driver. <laughs> the taxi driver was just absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. yeah but, so... you know, now... Um, you, you talk about leaders, and one of the articles we've got coming up in the next week is by a guy um, imploring people to stay in South Africa, but do these leadership courses that, you know, that all of us have got some leadership skills within us mm. that can help make South Africa better, you know, instead of waiting for the leaders to be leaders, just start leading yourself. I think uh, not in all different directions. He writes it a lot no, better than okay. I say it. <laughs> I, I do think that um, they should have people who are working in government who actually are qualified to do so. And this just comes back down to the cadre <laughs> deployment and everything. So, yeah. you know, I think that they should start getting rid of, rid of the dead wood of people who are not doing what they should be doing, that they should actually have people who have got degrees or have actually studied something or worked in politics for at least 10 years before they're allowed to become a minister. You know, that kind of thing. And then I think we'd, we'd have like a lot better and obviously people who are honest. That would be yes, yes. Yeah. But, you know, I was speaking to some English people yesterday and I think that, that how you're feeling is how many people around the world are feeling about their leaders. About and that leaders. right yeah. now, you know, m most of the world's best leaders are leading corporations rather than leading countries. Yeah. So we've got to try and lure them back to care about the people rather than about the dollar yeah unfortunately that's not going to work when you have people who show you the way forward is to chase the almighty dollar but anyway yeah. there we go let's go down to the good stuff i mean we're talking about supporting obviously the comrades but i mean i've been following what's happening in the gulf and that's just been lovely as well oh i know did you see paula rito actually won in canada so yeah. for anybody who's a subscriber of sa people we had it all weekend because she was coming first on the first day and then she dropped to second and third and oh it was just like heartbreaking and then on the final day she just pummeled her head and that's her first ladies pga tour win just exceptional uh, did i say that was in canada yes but that was the canada open so <laughs> <laughs> yes. yeah absolutely amazing have you been swimming in the sea too much? That sea air getting to your brain just a little, eh? <laughs> <laughs> it's the humidity, man. Your, your brain, your thoughts just can't move from one side to the other because it's just like too thick. Sorry. Which is absolutely yeah. my favorite thing. And then, of course, when it comes to um, cycling, I did watch a bit of cycling while I was away as well. It was so nice to actually have a you know, TVs in the place that were staying that actually had sport on it. And I just put it onto cycling because I sit there and yeah. just have that in the background and watch the countryside going by. It's oh, divine. divine. And we know you love your cycling. And Louis Monkeys, I mean, that's his, he got his first podium mm -hmm. um, finish at a world tour thing. Um, Word. and <laughs> yeah, cycle tour um which he said which he said was always one of his his goals before he could even think about retiring is yeah. he needed to get a podium finish so that so that's just huge that was in spain this weekend yeah, um, it was beautiful well, well done louis 
Okay, yeah. now there's one thing I sent you because, of course, um, I didn't actually get it because I follow these people. I got it because I follow Devo. I've been a yeah. complete Devo maniac since like the Whip early it. 80s. Since Whip yeah. It, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I I follow them on Facebook and I mean, I just love Devo. It's still one of my favorite, favorite things. And then they were like going, check out these girls from South Africa who obviously have got so much energy to do all of these things because they're wearing one of those silly red <laughs> flower pot hats that they have, the energizers. And then I thought, hang on a second, I've heard about the soap girls before, but I did not yeah. realize that they were divin, div, what do they call them? Divinishos. Or Devotees. Devotees. <laughs> Yeah. Love it. So and thought, okay, fine. So cool. And then everybody's going, yeah, the soap sister that are from Cape Town, these girls are really, really hot. And of course, they're over in America and doing all of these things. I, I just think yeah. it's absolutely fantastic. And you, and, oh, yeah. and you know, they also, and they're, and they're also kind of French. I mean, they are, they were, I think they were born in France. Their parents are French, but, but they did grow up in South Africa. So they're very, very South African. But I just, I love the the binding us together um but but yeah so, so for any south africans in america i think that friday night and saturday night are their last two um shows of this yeah. u.s tour so so go and watch them they're very hot little stickies as well they are they are yeah. and they and they do a quite a bit of controversial stuff i know we've shared this stuff before and and had some Mother Grundy's complain a little, <laughs> but they, they have a fantastic sense of humor. No, I think it's a lot of fun. And, and yeah. what is this that you've got here about 11 year old Mossel Bay? Oh, that is Giselle, also known as Miss G. She's 11 years old from Mossel Bay, and she's going to be walking on the 11th of September at New York Fashion Week. She's yeah, been invited by, at the age of 11. She's very professional. She's got a song coming out at the end of the year. Um, she's she's way ahead of the rest of us. <laughs> yeah, very cool. And, and apparently people who've worked with her say that the thing that stands out about her is her kindness. Mm. So that's, gonna, that's pretty cool. I have to check out that. Uh, oh, talking about models. I mean, obviously, yesterday, a very, very sad loss for South Africa in the way of our, a mo an MTA, model turned actress. And you've got that story, I know that. Yeah, so, so sad. Shelby Dean um, uh, Creek. I think overseas they just call her Shelby, Shelby Dean. Dean. Yeah, but, but her real surname is Creek. Just a sudden, a sudden illness, apparently, and she was in a New York hospital on Monday evening when she passed away. And Mel, you know, I saw, I don't know if you remember when I was at the Cannes Film Festival in May, mm. and I saw Triangle of Sadness, which won the, the Palm Door, which is the major Cannes Award. Um, and she, I never realized that I was watching her. I just presumed it was a Scandinavian girl because of the accent that she mm. put on for the, for the movie. She was brilliant. I just, I loved her in it. She was mesmerizing, she was funny she was self-deprecating she was just amazing and um so it's it's you know it's so tragic that there her dreams were coming true she she couldn't believe she was in can she um she had got engaged in may as well to her long time uh, boyfriend who's also from south africa and um and and this is just awful and, and just a week ago she, like six days ago, she had posted um, on Instagram a little video of her promoting um, a, a, some jeans. And in the video, she said how these jeans made her feel, and it was that feeling of going home to South Africa, of having a bra with her family, those moments that you just want to press pause and stay in. Mm. So, um, and nobody knows yet what it was from either, which is like really sad as well. Sure. Yeah. But I mean, for yeah. those people who don't know, of course, she was in Spud, the dark haired girl that um, Spud was. Amanda. I think her, yeah, she I acted as Amanda. Amanda. Yeah, yeah. that's so sad. Oh, anyway, okay. In both oh. Spuds, she was. Yes. All right, let's yeah. go back. Let's go away from entertainment for a moment and go back to sport because, of course, we've got. Um, well, we won't talk about the rugby because, of course, I was actually watching the rugby with my brother on Saturday morning, which was never a good idea. <laughs> Not bad if they win, but I mean, if his teams don't win, oh, good Lord, I actually had to leave. 
Um, so <laughs> we're not going to talk about. It. Let's talk about the sevens because the sevens always do us proud. <laughs> oh, they did do us proud. They came second, uh, so it was a little disappointing because really they they've been the outright winners the whole series, yeah. and and so they should have won the entire series, but in the end they didn't. Um, but what was what was really great for us is is that uh, one of the SA people followers had written to us a few days before and said, hey, I'm going do you want me to send photos and I was like yeah 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 please do and then she sent the photos and one of the main guys in the photos was uh, Neil McDonough who is from he's, he's an American actor with the white white hair he was in Suits and in Desperate Housewives oh, okay. so and and he's married to a South African. They've got five children. They've been married for like twenty years or something. But um, but there he was supporting South Africa and taking photos of all the Springbok uh, Blitzbok fans in the stadium and everything. And it turns out that they're all the, the girl who'd written to us. They're all close friends. So oh, fantastic. Yeah. In fact, they're going to do her and his wife, um, whose name is Ruva. Um, they're going to do a special article for SA People about, oh, fantastic. about it, yeah. So look out for okay. that. And then uh, we're going to go back to golf for a moment as well, because of course there's been all of these amazing pictures of um, like Skakuza Golf Club. <laughs> Wasn't that amazing? I mean, that made international headlines. Yeah. <laughs> so crazy. Because how many golf courses do you go to where there's two hungry lions and 20 even hungrier hyenas? Having a feast oh. on your on the fairway. Yeah. <laughs> oh, crazy, crazy! Do you know that that golf course started just for the staff? About I don't know in the seventies or something. They built it just for the staff, and thank goodness they opened it up to everybody because it is the wildest golf course in the world. It's yeah. it's very special. Oh, well, I walked past the Parkview one this morning. Just saw some very very irate people. No no animals, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe some hardy dogs. <laughs> okay, so um, what local good news do we have? Oh, so much. Um, well, South Africans united against Megan. Um, I don't know if you saw that. Footsack Megan. Hashtag. No? Oh, no. uh, yeah. Um, there's way. nothing... Okay, there's nothing like a common enemy to unite people together. And Meghan was trying to, Meghan Markle, was, she was trying to um, criticize the British royal aides who hadn't been sensitive to her needs. But by doing it, she kind of carelessly uh, offended South Africa. And, um, and so this also made headlines because, because South Africa, so, so basically she said that when she was in South Africa, she was at a function. After the function, she was told, oh, Arch, there was a, a fire in Archie's bedroom. Oh, yes, yes, I heard about that, yes. Okay. Yes, yes, and it turned out it was a heater that had melted and Archie was not in the bedroom at the time. And a security official, an alleged security official, has come forward to confirm the story. Mm -hmm. um, um, but, but yeah, South Africans obviously didn't like it because they thought that she was criticizing South Africa, but that wasn't even in her mind. All she was thinking was that the British aides should have then let her stay with Archie and instead she had to go on to the next engagement and they, mm -hmm. and they wouldn't let her talk about it because they said, oh no, you know, imagine how it will look and, and didn't care about how she felt. So, so lots of people are very angry with her. Lots of South Africans are very, very angry with Megan. Talking about footsack though, somebody sent me something this morning, a lovely video, where they were going hot air ballooning. And the balloon was on the, you know, where, where they saw about to fill it up with hot air because it's on the ground and, the, and these two cheetah came along. And the two cheetah were trying to go inside the hot air balloon and they were going around the balloon or around the, and they, they've got all of the filming of this. And and the people are trying to chase them. Eventually, this woman Amazing. just turns around and lets rip it out. You just, what the heck that you've ever heard in your life? The cheetahs took one look at this with this woman coming towards them and they bolted. Man, it was fantastic. <laughs> they clearly were Afrikaans cheetahs. <laughs> um, so, so, Ma, will you send me that video link, please? I will. I'll send you the link. It's so much. I don't know when it's from, but it's okay. just so much. But it'll be wonderful to share. I'm sure lots of people around the world would love that. Yeah, I'm sure at the moment, though, a lot of people are saying, oh, no, foot sex sting. 
going and playing in Pretoria <laughs> instead of playing in Johannesburg. I mean, what's that about, really? I know. I, I was going to ask you, what, is there a reason? No, I don't know. I don't know. But, um, but, but somebody has already said to me, don't worry, I'll come and pick you up and we can go through together. <laughs> You're like, no, making the Groot trek to Pretoria now. <laughs> but can't, can't you go on the Gau train? Yeah, but I don't know where the car train goes to at the end of the day. <laughs> yeah, but you can find out. This would be a lack of little outing. Oh, I think it's lovely. And and um and so 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 are you a Sting fan? Because I mean this is amazing. He's gonna be playing all his old stuff too. I love Sting. I oh. love the police, I love Sting. I mean I I don't follow Sting on social media, but I do follow Stuart Copeland. And he thought yeah. it was very funny that I said, look, I can't come across to your concert, unfortunately, that you've got going this past weekend because I'm down on the KZN South Coast. But otherwise, <laughs> I'd have been there in a heartbeat. <laughs> <It's one of laughs> I'm like, I, I remember I went to see the last concert that they actually did together in 1983 at um, Wembley. Oh, amazing. Um, it was an amazing concert, yeah. So I've been a, a yeah. huge fan of everything that all of them, and especially Stuart Copeland, sorry. Yeah. He was actually the one that brought the sound for the police. If you listen to something he did before the police called Clark Kent, spelled with a K. Um, and I mean, that was, his, I, I've always followed him. He's amazing, fantastic musician. Sorry, I'm gushing. <laughs> I know. I'm hoping I'll get free tickets. <laughs> Lovely. Oh, yeah, so nice. I, I also, did you see that thing about um, those people who have put together those showers for people um where is it in cape? for homeless people yeah for it's down in the people. western cape yeah. such a great idea the so so it's like a, a a big mobile bus of 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 showers and then yeah. they can drive to places where they're homeless people so the homeless people can get clean fantastic I yeah like that a lot. it's working really well and talking about clean i'm still yes. battling now from my little foray onto the south coast beach I saw uh, you, you there. saw we, we, we shared your you, video you shared and it went video. very viral. People were very inspired. I'm, but I'm really paying the price for it because, of course, I haven't walked on a beach for a very long time. And it was an eight kilometer walk back uh, up and down. So I yeah. walked the high tide mark on the way from Trafalgar down towards Impunyati Game uh, Nature Reserve. Forgetting, of course, that there's actually a nudist beach on the way there. <laughs> so having to avert my eyes occasionally. Um, so I walked on the high tide, tide line, and I walked back on the low tide because it was low tide when we were walking back. And of course, with all of the bending and picking up all the bits of plastic and all the rubbish and finding bags along the way and leaving stuff and then picking it up on the way back, and, and the amount of walking on the beach, my legs and my lower back are still killing me. <laughs> <laughs> So you got to do it more often. You. Trafalgar, <laughs> you have no idea what I went through for you. So, yeah, just to keep the beach. And I just thought if everybody could do that, wherever yeah. they are, just take a bag with you and you see rubbish, pick it up, throw it away somewhere. If everybody just did that, my goodness, what a wonderful place this would be. Yeah. That's, that's my thing. Absolutely. Okay. More. Right. So what have we got in the way of entertainment? We can go back to what's what's going to amuse us apart from you and me, of course. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's, there's so much. I wanted to know um, the South African thing that's just started on Netflix. I think I saw that you had started watching it. Ludic? <laughs> yeah, with my, I heard uh, the my... production was not so good. I, the no, acting's no, good. I'm not quite the sure. The editing. What... I'm, I think it might be the editing, and I'm going to have a word with Ian Gabriel, who is the director on it. Um, obviously, I'm not going to speak to Arnold because he and I don't speak anymore, apparently. Um, <laughs> but it, 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 felt, it's, it, it was almost like there was a bit of a problem with the... Um, I, I don't know if the people were speaking another language instead of speaking English, and then it's dubbed, and for some reason it's just coming across strangely, but it felt a little bit jilty. Johnson. Okay. That yeah. kind of it, it's an odd feeling. But I mean I'm apparently people are saying just work your way through the first two episodes and you'll probably enjoy the whole lot. I mean, Arnie is just of course we're talking about Arnold Forslu, obviously. Yeah. Um I mean I and I just watched The Mummy, the one with uh, Tom Cruise. Don't yes, watch. filmed in okay. Namibia. Don't watch it. Okay. Um rather watch the mummy with Arnold in it. Okay. It's <laughs> much better. <laughs> and and then of course watching going from that to watching Ludic. Um, I'm going to be watching it again for the rest of today, so that's, we'll, we'll see, we'll see if I, I change my mind. I'll, I'll post on, on Facebook about it, whether I like it or not. Oh, good, I'll look out for that. Stuff. Yeah. 
I know, and 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 on on the international front for you, having Showmax, I just thought you might be excited to know that Hand Handmaid's Tale they've picked up the fifth season. It's coming on the fifteenth of September. Yeah, the Handmaid's mm -hmm. Tale. Gosh, that can really smuggle your brain completely, huh? Hey? Yeah. I found it. I mean, it's it's fascinating watching. It is brilliantly shot. But the dystopia, I mean, I, you just find yourself getting really angry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I spent yeah. a lot of time being angry when I was watching that series, but I definitely will be watching that. Definitely. And, and then another one to get angry for is um, we've, got, we've only got the trailer so far, but it's, it's a trailer worth watching, which is Stein Heist. And it's about South Africa's biggest corporate scam ever which is steinhoff and marcus yeah, Uster. Yeah. so it's like a three-part documentary it's the same guys who made um uh, the kruger's dorp murders it was oh, yeah, called yeah. devil's dorp um devil's it's dorp, yeah. yeah it's the same same producers and and it's brilliant interviews and just insight into you know how did they manage to fool the country for so many years you know to get away with it so, so that 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 trailer's on SA people, and then Dam. I don't know if you remember how successful Dam yeah. was. That's been picked up for another season, and they're filming it right now. Um, and it's, of course, it's the Safters this weekend. I yes. think Dam has the most nominations of of any drama. So, um, so we'll be covering that this weekend. Oh, the the Safters. About people filming, I see uh, Kate Normington po posted yesterday that she's shooting with Tally or Suzette. Or yeah, 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 yeah. No, so oh, she was it... just saying she's in it as well. Yeah. Okay, so she's in the one Tally goes to Joburg. Joburg, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. fantastic. Yeah, so she's she's working. Tally's Joburg Diaries. That's what it'll be. Yes. Yeah. Tally's baby diaries. Da da da. Yeah. Yeah, so she, oh. she's in that. Yeah, it's like a oh, really Laka, laka, yes. Yeah, and then also, what, what's, what's Klein Karutu? Oh, that's for anybody who is overseas and can get Shamax International. It's a real beautiful, feel good South Africans in the Karoo having a second go at life. But, you know, obviously it's fiction, um, romance, heartbreak, and beautiful landscapes. Okay. So. So it's really worth watching TV series. You can well, binge watch Karu, it. I just see that um, I'm just looking at my books at the moment, done by Chris Murray and Julian. Um, they put out the books on the Karoo. Uh, of course, uh, Chris was the editor of Scope magazine after Dave Mullaney, I think, back in the day. And um, he's a, a well-respected journalist, but they live down in Cathcart. Um, so they, they do a lot of books about the Karoo and I'm, I'm fascinated with it. But then I know I've just put you in touch with somebody who I hope you're going to do something. Also a journalist here from South Africa. Uh, he was a travel journalist and a motoring journalist. And he and I actually raced um, Group N, the six, seven and nine hour races together at Kalani. Jeff Dalglish, um, he's, yes. in, he's, he's leaving again today to go back to Scotland for the launch of his uh, new book. Um, which, I mean, he's been doing a whole bunch of books, so hopefully... Um, Fantastic. That'll be coming up. Yeah, that'll be coming up on SAP. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, he's, it's touch, so great. Yeah. I mean, the best was when we had our car, when we were racing. Of course, it had M. Walker and G. Dalglish and Bux Carolyn. I don't remember. I don't know if you remember Bux, okay? He was like no. bikes and racing cars and things. He comes up and he sees the car and he just goes, huh. Check at that. Two old farts in one car because he thought it was Murray Walker, not Melanie Walker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he would have been pleasantly surprised to see you. Oh, no, they were because I was the only girl who was racing then as well. So it was quite fun. Yeah. Aww. But there we go. Yeah. So what have you got coming up next week? Well, the Safters is the, is the main thing that we're going to be focusing on. We're really hoping for a lot of big wins for Showmax. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Well, Jenny, I'm going to let you get off to the beach. I could hear that. Uh, was that your taxi beeping outside? <laughs> I'm so used to that happening. I don't need a taxi. It's two minutes away. 
you've got to come visit so that you can see. Yeah. I'm coming. I am <laughs> okay, coming. good. You know that. And then we're going to go walk the Camino so I can try and get oh, my body love in to. shape again. Yeah. Cool. Well, for everybody who's been listening and is uh, has found some wonderful people doing wonderful things here in South Africa or abroad who are South African and has anything to do with South Africa, don't forget you can send stories to Jenny on sapeople.com and on Facebook. Don't miss out. Share the love. We love to talk and skin a lacquer about everybody around the world. Jenny, we'll catch up with you again next week. Take care. Thanks, Melanie. Bye.